Hello, hello everyone, Jim Phoenix here. <clears throat> Jim Phoenix here, and a little warning on this one, a little content warning. I discussed Gene Wilder's autobiography where there is some sexual assault being discussed. We don't go into graphic detail, but we mention it, that he was assaulted as a, you know, as a, as a child. So, warning. I guess I should have a warning for the warning now or something. I don't know. Anyways, around 50 minute mark. If you want to skip through that stuff. We discuss it a little bit. Skip on through. Hit, we pick up around, you know, the hour mark. All right. Later, taters. And happy Veterans Day, yo. Hey, everyone. Jim Phoenix here. And boy, do we have an exciting program for you. We are loading the decks. We've got Shadows, the 2020-something, 22-21 hike movie. And we've got guest room or boxes staying in my guest room. I'm not even sure which. And then our movie combined, our combo movie, shall we say, Frankenstein Jr. Or as the rest of the world knows, Young Frankenstein. All this and more, the next Streaming Demons. It's it. Hey everyone, Jim Phoenix here, and I'm back. I didn't go anywhere, actually. I was just listening to my own theme music for a while. So, today on our special, big, special Streaming Demons, we have none other than Jay and Brannock. Say hello. Where else would I be? Well, you know, you went away on vacation or an assignment to find someone else and... They found you and you were like haggling with soap and that was currency or something like that. And you were like, I don't know, but we have to do some soap anyways. And it wasn't me. It was the one-armed man. It was the one-armed man who was very dirty. But how are you going to wash yourself with one-armed man? With, with the other arm. With uh, Al's Soap Company. Al's Soap. All you have to do is put in promo code <laughs> combo box. Not our name. <laughs> Not Just, even close. Yeah, you just got to put in whatever you want, really. Type in random letters and see what happens. <laughs> let, let us know. Let us know. All right. That's, it's all good. So for those of you brand new to Streaming Demons, the premise is simple. You take one borrowed, one new, grandma's one, cookies. one grandma's cookies, and sometimes we get a blue and old, whatever. As my good friend Dr. Payne would say. Who cares? Right. We just got this out of the way. If you haven't, If you haven't seen the game by now. Well, welcome aboard. We always need more people, I guess. We usually have a special guest. However, when we don't, we have a very, very cool combo thing. We, we both team up on a movie, and I'm very excited for this movie because it's not anything that Box can ruin. My childhood is safe. Unlike last time, where Box just trashed. What was that movie? Uh, really Fresh of Death. Faces of Death. Yeah. I was so upset. That great child's movie, yes. Faces of it, Death. That is it, I thought, you know, you know whose favorite movie it is? Baby Yoda. Yeah, that's her favorite movie. They told me that. I don't think Grogu's favorite movie is. Who's Grogu? Grogu what? Grogu? Isn't it that his Gro name? Grogu? No, right. it's Baby Yoda. Gray Skull. Dude. Baby Yoda. That's all it is, man. That's all I know. So we are going to go deep into f young Frankenstein. <laughs> deep into him. I can't wait. So yeah, deep into get him. Get some, some parts in there. Consensually. He is near, well, he's not. The, he's undead, isn't he? He's, but he can consent. He can still consent. He can say fire. He can, bad. He can go. Ah. <laughs> and putting on the Ritz. And. Ah. Okay, so we're getting excited. Okay, it's so you can exciting. Make this yummy sounds, as Gene Wilder says. <laughs> I'm listening to Gene Wilder's autobiography right now. It is depressing as fuck. Oh, <laughs> it's just depressing. Man. It's fascinating, but very depressing. It, he was the, a uh, very like, triumphant oh. man. Very he, funny. No, I, I think that was David Bowie. Oh, I think it's an Elephant Man. Like, I don't think I ever played the Elephant Man. Mm. No. Or are you saying the Alpha Man is not triumphant enough? I. Oh, see, that's what you're doing. 
And what would it be? What would it be without some sort of trashing by Box Human, a.k.a. J.M. Brannock? If that is a real name, I have no idea whose real name is what it, where. So what do you have against the Elephant Man? Huh? Uh, you know, he's, uh, he's a jerk. He's a jerk. You hate him. He's a jerk. Someone said, I was reading Alan Moore's From Hell, and it was positive that he could have been Jack the Ripper a little bit. Positive. I've heard that too. I've heard that too. And uh, you know, let's put on our tinfoil hats and say sure. Why not? Let's have you seen my interest rates in this mortgage? I can't afford tinfoil anymore. (laughs) A hat? What's a hat? Well I I I, we're like newspaper hats now. Oh sorry, you're in Canada. A toque. Sorry, a toque. A toque. toque. We we put on our tinfoil toques, eh? Put on your thinking toque. Eh? You know, the one that makes you think. All right. So because there's no special guest, you can go first. What's your movie box? Thank Brannick? you. It is Brannick. The box of Brannick. Boxy J.M. Brannock, if that is Boxy my Jam Christian Brannick. name. If that is, is. I and mean, we know it is. Yeah, it is. All right. So I have. Who cares? Yeah. Damn it. it pain. Just walking by. He just walked by. I knew he was that just was coming up. Okay. So I have the guest room. It is Italian. Oh, which room? The guest room. Uh, kitchen. No, it's not the guest room. It's the uh, guest dining room. Room. Oh, does it have a stove in it? Bedroom. There master is a bed. stove. Oh, there's no master bedroom more. It's what? What, what are they called now? They're not. They're not called master bedrooms anymore because that super duper bedrooms. Slavery. I think they're yes. called super duper bedrooms. Super duper bedrooms that have bathrooms in them. No, wait, bathtubs. Yes. So this is about a room with a bathtub. There is a bathtub in a scene. Yes. Okay. Good to know. Good so to know. it is about a woman named long. Stella. Stella. Sorry. Stella. And um, a stranger knocks at the door. Because he says that he has reservations to the guest room there. And uh, within, uh, because he's desperate, she does let him in and stay there. And wait, 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 wait. He's desperate and she he's lets desperate. him in? Wouldn't yeah. she be desperate if she, I mean, she, he's what desperate. Year is this, taking he, place? this is, in, and that's a good question. Yeah, it's contemporary. She's got a cell phone. Um, she has a her cell husband, phone, but no. Her husband's oh, kind of like left her, maybe. So mm. she contacts him. He comes back, and things ensue. Calamity. Calamity, Jane. Calamity ensues. I cannot say anything more. I have really a non-disclosure agreement. I could be sued. Uh. Sorry. I will JM just, Brannock I will, can be sued, not haunted MTL. Not, LLC. Yeah, not haunted MTL. <laughs> Me personally in this yeah, room okay. right now, if I say anything more about the guest room, because Sad. no, I can't. Because if I did, I would give it away. I would give it away now. So I will not spoil it. I will just say this one thing that at the very end, okay, I'll say two things. One of them is that love conquers all. Love conquers all. Love conquers all. And the second thing, there is a dinosaur at the very end and it plays a a pretty large role. Of course there fucking is. And I'm not lying about these things. Of course there fucking is. There's a dinosaur. There, There would have to be. There's also like a shark with Nazis at the end. No. Is this even a real fucking movie? This is a real movie. It's it's a beautiful movie. It's shot so oh, well. Nice. The cinematography is just gorgeous. Um, the oh, acting bro. is amazing. Um, Camilla. Uh, Fil- Camilla? Camilla like Felipe? Prince Charles's wife? Camilla Felipe. Or sorry, King Charles. Estella is amazing. Uh Guido Caprino as Gilio. Sorry, I don't That's speak Italian. Racist as hell. I then don't. how would you watch this movie? You don't speak Italian. 
uh, huh? because it's called subtitles, which you hate. Oh, I can't read. We went over this. Yes, that's why I'll like. That's why you, you guys ever teach. send me talk to me. <laughs> I want to teach what read. I can't do. I, exactly. Those who teach cannot do, or what was it? I'm saying. So those this who is can also, do, those who can't do Mountain Dew through Redwater Entertainment. So we thank Redwater Red Water. Redwater Entertainment for the screener. Oh, wait, wait, yours are from Redwater? Yeah, Redwater. Do we do we, do we see them? We didn't do the same fucking screener, did we? I hope not. No, you did oh, shadows. Shit. Mine was Redwater as well. Does Redwater start out with a like uh, like a shark? Yeah. Oh my Christ, dude! I we thought about not- you today because I was watching my screener. And they're from yeah. it's from Redwater as well. Yeah. Like, oh my god, I'm I sure. love this fucking thing. Okay. Right. <laughs> I'm sure. So, so um today's Redwater Day. It's Redwater, Redwater Day. Redwater. Um but again, I cannot I cannot say too much. I will say that I did know the twist, I think a little bit sooner than again? they wanted me to, but it was really well done, really re- well acted. It was tightly written. The blood in it was really beautiful. <sighs> what? No, I can't. Uh, I can't just... say. I can't say that the blood is beautiful. The blood was beautiful. Blood is beautiful. It, it wasn't was so it. perfect. The blood just, was awesome. The acting was great, and it was just. Mr. Gear, I- what too? It was very interesting, and I thought the payoff was pretty good. I'm sure some people are going to be like, meh, 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 but you know what? Who cares? Yeah. Some will be like that. Who cares? But you know what the payoff is? The payoff is cookies. Yeah. Payoff is yes, cookies we only have to given us, to us by Baby Yoda. No, I'm not doing anything for Baby Yoda. Oh, fine. Because you called him the wrong name. He's, uh, he's pouting. Oh, he's, yeah, he's back. There he is. Okay. So, okay. So, you can't say anything much about it. I don't it want is to from it. Redwater. I don't want to spoil it's it's it. an Italian yeah. film. It's an Italian film. It is Fuck. set really just in one house, so one, basically it, one really? location. Yeah, with How four many people. Actors? Four, four people. people. Dude, wait. You're gonna find out. This is so weird. Five people. Okay. Sorry, five. 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 Oh, plus a, a Zord dinosaur that comes out with fucking yes. sharks and Nazis. Yeah, there's there's a dinosaur. But that's not people. You know who are people? Box, who non-binaries? They're Thank people. You. They are people too. <laughs> they, are. they are people too. Just like you yeah. and me. <laughs> Wait, hey, don't be insulting. <laughs> Why you gotta so, throw that word "people" around like that? Um. So, I would say that this, you know, again, like I said, I don't want to, you know, even don't even look at the trailer. Don't even look at the synopsis. Who's online. got time for trailers? Um, if you like one. slow builds, if you like tension, if you like like puzzling out things, if you like good acting, um, and good cinematography and just beautiful shots and scenery and just and music, because the music okay. was really well as good as well. I would say go take this dive. Just go into it blind and kind of just have fun with it. I'm gonna ask a question. Who wrote this? You know? Yeah, it was um one of the people was the actress. Um, it was written by Francesco Augustini and Filippo. Oh, I'm sorry, it was not the actress. Um, (laughs) They don't act at all. I was wrong. It was Filippo Gilli and Francesco Augustini. Okay, and who's the director? Stefano Lodovinci. Okay, that's so weird. Everything else is kind of lining up except for the actors and writers, or the directors and writers. Then. Okay, okay. So for what would you movie? give this movie? Yeah, yeah. That, we, I'm like looking yeah, at my eyes. Because we watched separate movies. <laughs> I, I, well, we, did we, though? Did we? we? We did. Yours is called Shadows. Mine is called The Guest Room. That could be the Italian name. We, I, don't, um, I don't know that. Maybe it's the Italian name. I don't. Another one's like the Canadian name. Shadows. Shadows in the guest room. Maybe that's the entire thing. Mm. Young Frankenstein's shadows in the guest home. Guest room. Guest home. Jesus. Guest room. <laughs> so I would uh, actually rate this movie um, a 3.5. 3.5? Yeah. It was really good. Um, I don't think, because because it was a little bit 
I knew what the twist yeah. was kind of going to be. Um, Let's twist again. It didn't super wow me, but again, it was fun to watch it unfold. Uh -huh. It was really fun to watch it unfold. And Shit. it was okay. just... It was just really lovely. It was a lovely little taut little thriller. What did you give Faces of Death? Do you remember? I cannot remember what I gave it. Mm. A okay. two, three, a two. two point five. This is, this is a three point five. Yeah, this is a 3.5. This is better than Faces of Death. Although Faces of Death was funnier. I will say that. I did laugh oh. pretty hard. Where's my kazoo? Hold on. Oh, where's I my did, kazoo? I did laugh. <laughs> There I go. Wait, Especially well, when he was singing about the pollution. Oh my god, I died. Hey, that, that shit worked out. I, it, it's basically a summertime right now. It's 70 in November. I'm just saying it was charming. In a way, I did not expect Faces of Death to be charming. None of the faces were charming. Well, the small faces were. I, I think they're quite charming. Actually, the band. All right, a 3.5. Damn it. Yeah. I yeah. can, I can follow that, but not with my movie. <laughs> <laughs> but I will follow that with my movie. Oh, good. I had shadows, and when you're googling shadows, there there's like 20 movies called Shadows right now. It's the one from I'm 2020. Sure. Yeah, well, yeah, that's three. like such. That's one. That's one complaint that I do have with the the horror industry horror. as a horror is that horror. the the titles people we need better titles we need titles that grab your attention not these fucking the forgotten the shadow I, I, yeah. you know it's, I, just, it's disgusting all right yeah i i can't say anything because if, if you know who i am you know that when i started out writing most of my story collections are named after monkey songs because i was like i have nothing for a title nothing uh pleasant valley sunday there you go Baby, so honestly I, I was naming car? them after <laughs> no 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 that's that's the beatles monkeys only oh. monkeys which i guess oh. would be neil diamond but I'm yeah sorry yes the monkeys we, hey hey we're the no, monkeys okay. got I it i thought paperback rider was a monkey song so whatever. okay now my movie shadows shadows in 2020 Alma, from IMDb, Alma and Alex, two adolescent sisters, are survivor, survivors of a catastrophic event. They live deep in the woods with her mother. See, the capitalized mother here should not be capitalized here, whatever. A strict, overprotective woman who has sheltered them from ominous presence, the shadows, which live in the daylight and infest the world beyond the river, a border for Alma and Alex. When they follow her mother, Kaplan, that's actually proper then, out for hunting, they discover evil. No, they discover the truth about the shadows in their own reality. So I did not read the summary before I saw this. I just saw like, oh, like, oh this looks, sounds cool. It's Italian horror. It was like some sort of like survivalist horror. That's what I thought. It's got three people in one room for most of the movie. It's a slow burn. It's a pretty slow burn. And yeah. That's not ter that 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 doesn't have to be necessarily terrible though. I mean, not necessarily, but it's also something in the first act you just you're like, oh shit, it's this movie. Okay, I, I'm not. I won't give it away, but it's like it, you figured out the trick way too early. For gotcha. me, it was after the credit roll of, of like the the intro credits. Wow. I was okay, like, oh. mine, mine, mine took a little bit of time, a little bit of guesswork, because it's like, oh, yeah. this person could be so many different things. Um, yeah. Oh, no. so yours was right, right then in there. Yeah, and I can't because I can't say what movies this reminds me of, takes liberally from, or is inspired by, maybe. Strip because me for it your would ruin, killer. It would ruin the entire movie. Was it strip if me I for said your killer? No, it might be Faces of Death, though. Yeah. <laughs> The Although the, there's this, in 2021, the Italian National Syndicate of Film Journalists nominated this movie for best score. So again, the oh. music, right? Is and the score good? I had a problem with it. I, I had, a, I'll, I'll be honest, I had the problem with the score, not because it wasn't good, because it was good. Oh. I had a problem with the score. 
Yeah. And because it was trying to do psychological effects, it was just like, oh, fuck, I have a headache, guys. Can we not do this fucking thing? Like, can we just like just put this on mute for a bit? I'll just watch it with subtitles and don't tell Box I'm watching with his claptions on. Yeah, the <laughs> score is amazing. It sets a tone. It, it puts you on the edge. But it, if you got to have a headache like I did today, I was just not into hearing that shit. I was like, fucking hell. I, we get it. You're good. Cool. But so is like scratching nails on a chalkboard. Do the same fucking thing. I'm not going to get a, a nominative award for that one. I might know. So if you are looking for a slow burn that includes three people for most of the movie. And if you're looking for that and only that, gosh, go for it. It's not a bad movie. And as you're saying before, everything you said about your movie is, holds up true. The acting is phenomenal. The, the music, the score is phenomenal. The editing from you know everything, tactically, it's a great movie. Technically, it's a great movie. It falls apart on the premise. It's just been done. It wasn't interesting the first time you see a premise. It's not interesting the 15th time you saw the premise. They've been premised to death. That, I think that's what the whole thing is. Unfortunately for me, this movie falls down on its premise. It's, it's just... As my good friend Dr. Payne would say, who cares? Was it scary at all? No. Or did it have elements? No. Spoops? No. Spoopsies? No. No spoopsies? No. no. Not even Zero. shadow spoopsies? Honestly, God, unless this movie was, was called Shadows, I wouldn't even know what the fuck they're talking about. Oh. I'm like, oh, it's called Shadows? I guess like that kind of makes some sort of sense. They do have. Women bleeding in the shower. I guess that could be the only part like you find kind of unsettling, maybe. See, but now, only if you're touchy about body. I've you know imagery. Said this before, and I'll say it again. I feel like we should have more menstruation in horror movies. Mm -hmm. Um, but not like it's usually done because usually it's overdone like there's there's that, that something one plum house one wrong yeah like there's yeah. something wrong with that you know but i don't know there's been a couple times where it's like you know this would have enhanced the scene a bit more especially when it is female driven <sighs> yeah and all three actresses are all three actors are actresses all are three they? characters are female. Yeah, yeah. All three okay. characters are female. Okay. And so I was remember that one test that we're talking about before for the feminism. Back Bechdel. Delta. Yeah. It, it's like if you can be saved by Thomas Hardy in the movie as a feminist movie, according to you. I, I believe that's the that's the test. <laughs> that well, is they were not, not saved by Thomas. Son, and <laughs> they, they, they weren't saved by Thomas Hardy. <laughs> so it can't I be a feminist movie. I believe that Thomas Hardy and uh What's the beautiful Charlize Theron? Um, were equals and egalitarian, and that's what feminism is. They were mm. partners. They were partners in crime, like Bind and Clyde. Partners, exactly. They were partners like Gene Wilder and Richard Pryor. And talk about a score. Talk about a mm. score. Because every right. time that I heard that, dun, dun, dun. Yeah, that's all we can afford. I know, and that's I actually did it in a lower key, dun, in a different dun. tea, in a different key. Different um, tea? You have too much tea. A different tea oh, in a different tea. key, um, so we don't get sued. Um, but basically, that's the score of the dramatic. I think they called it the dramatic chipmunk, but it's not a dramatic chipmunk. But that old meme back in the day. That's fun. Uh, no, but Isn't it was that always what? that. But you. You know, the young kids won't know, but the older people like me will know. Like, that was the, all the rage back in the day is that dramatic chipmunk with that score. And what it the played. hell are you talking about? Are what you what kidding? score? Are you kidding no. me? No, well, I don't know what you're talking about. In Young Frankenstein. There's a dramatic chipmunk? Oh, my friend. I'll Did we watch the same movie? 
You're so old. Um, um I don't know what a meme is. All right. Well, before we move on. Before we move Okay, so yeah. Uh, what is your... Well, you say it a 3.5? I was going to give it a 3 before you said that. Okay. Yeah, uh, this is this movie like is, a, a, is, a, is a good three. It, if you are looking for a slow burn, if you're looking for a, a thing that's been done a million times but with good acting this time. And that's the thing. One of the movies that it kind of rips on had phenomenal acting as well. So it was kind of like, damn, they did it better. And another uh, movie it rips on had like shit. So I was like, well, this movie absolutely wins over this. But it's not exactly the same. They're like, I would say inspired by it. They're not exactly the same. Well, they're exactly not the same mother. You know what I mean? So I'm giving this a three. It does what it should be. It, it, it's it so hard. You know. It's so frustrating because I kind of want to. I want to know what that other movie or the other movies are. But I know. I'll tell you off soon, cam. I know as soon as you would say it, I know that everybody would be like, yeah. "Oh, that's that's the thing." Did you have that for your movie too? Because you figured no. it out, like, uh, like, oh, okay. No, like, I, I knew the person was somebody, and then when it got to a certain scene shocks, of a photograph, man. and then I was like, oh, I know, I know who this person is, but I don't know how and why we got here. And then it was fun to see kind of it unfold. Is it um, easy? Huh? It's Kanye. It's Kanye, wasn't it? It's Con- you can tell me. It was not Kanye. Thank God. Oh, man. Thank God. Thank you. But, <laughs> um, yeah, it, it, it was just, it was good. It was good. It was good. And I'm right. glad that I watched it. And um, Oh, yeah. No, absolutely. I, mean, I watched, this is probably the first horror movie I've seen like, fresh for a very long time that wasn't in a theater. I just saw Halloween ends or kills or kills the ending, whatever the hell it was. So, yeah, it, it, these are good movies. Like, a three is nothing to be ashamed about. 3.5 oh, yeah. is pretty good, too. These absolutely. are better than what we've been reviewing lately. So, absolutely. Yeah, and check like, these out. To me, three is is good. Like, three is, like, worth seeing. Like, yeah. four is, like, wow, holy shit, guys. Like, you got to see this. And five is, like, this is hands down one of the best movies I've ever seen. I'm best already buying ever. it. I'm I like, copies. you know, yeah. So it's like, it's a five. 3.5 is absolutely nothing to sneeze at. It's incredible. That's true. God bless you. So, God bless you. Yeah. This that. is, <laughs> Go on. this is what we're going to do. Oh, wow. You know, my movie comes out from Redwater Entertainment, by the way. The North American Video on Demand debut comes out on November 15th. That means Amazon, Google Play, In Demand, Dish, et cetera, et cetera, iTunes, all this stuff. Madness, bro. Madness, as Larry would say. November 15th. And I can't say enough. The acting in it is phenomenal. I I honestly was like, wow, I can't believe it's like these are two kids and and, uh, and they're they're far better acting than I've seen in a very long time for any age. So Mine check is that one out. out. I'll check it out. Mine is already Yours out. Already out. Yep, you can watch it um, on Amazon Prime for four dollars, on Vudu mm. for four dollars, on Apple TV for eight. Um, I would watch it. I would go on to Prime and give it a go. Like, like Optimus I said, Prime. If you like, you know, these kind of like these puzzles to piece out, and um, like slow burn and like tension, this is the movie for you. You know, if you're like, no, I want like explosions and and heads bipping and bopping around and autobots and autobots and sharks that are nazis then it's not the one for you i can't see them can you not see them (laughs) (laughs) yeah so anyway so 3.5 check them both out so check out shadows and guest room check them both out they're on video is what was it worth four hours for you yeah absolutely yeah same yeah mine same if it was like four or five bucks, the same. All right. It was worth, but you know what movies worth, worth effort. A hell of a lot more money for me. A hell of a lot more money. <laughs> As a movie we're doing together. Yep. It is none other than Frankenstein Jr. in parts of the world, also known as young, younger Frankenstein, young Frankenstein. Kids, 
Steen. Well, Gene Wilder and Steen. Terry Gar and Martin Freeman. Uh, wait, Martin Freeman. And, Shit. Uh, Marty. Not, I said Martin Freeman. That's someone <laughs> else. Did. Marty Feldman, too. You did. Madeline Kahn, Peter Boyle. And Gene Lee. Hackman. Gene Hackman. That's right. Gene Hackman is not there. And I, I didn't even realize it when I was younger because he's wearing a whole bunch of fake hair and beard <laughs> yes he's wearing so much fake hair and beard but but now that i'm older and i know who he is i'm like holy crap is that gene hackman it is it is yeah. and he, he's fantastic i was gonna he's, make us espresso hysterical <laughs> he's so he's funny. hysterical He's so funny. I sent you the dramatic chipmunk, by the way, so so Jim can all be going along with us and on this, the hell this fantastic is, journey on um what what that means of when I say that the score is basically the the uh the, the why chip- is the chipmunk? It's not a chipmunk. I know it's, it's not a chipmunk, but that's what everybody called it. It's an otter, bro. It's and an that's, otter. It was it was very uh, popular back in the day. Mm-hmm. But every very time that popular. it would play, every time it would play, I'd be like, "Oh my god!" But yes, so actually, this movie is very apt right now for me because I have just watched for this Halloween season Frankenstein one and two, the original, um, old timey ones. Yeah. So it was this was actually a perfect uh little ride for me because it was it it does um borrow a lot from them. And uh um, borrow borrow. Uh, it's, borrow or borrow. Well, it's it's homage and also parody from them and it's parody and, was, and homage. Uh it could be both and it can be either. Both either. All right. I'll, I'll it goes it. both ways. Well, hey now. <laughs> um, of course, Voodoo. written directed by Mel Blank, and also I Mel think Blank, was... motherfucker, Mel that's Blank. Quite funny. Oh my god, Mel Brooks, my mistakes. Holy Christ! You know, I really love that Mel Brooks movie. <laughs> what was that called? Bugs Bunny. Bugs Bunny. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, you I screwed up. I screwed up. We all screw up. It's great. It's fine. You screw up. I screw up. We, we all, all screw, screw up. up. Ah. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I think it was also, uh, oh, I think I saw it was written also by Gene Wilder, too. Mostly and, Gene Wilder and Bell uh, Brooks pitched in a lot, too. Yeah. So, and you could, you can kind of tell Gene Wilder completely kind of off the chain but in the best of ways um as as frankenstein Frankenstein. Froderick. (laughs) but dig 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 gene wilder and mel brooks had two number one movies in 1974 was it the producers too was that 74 i thought producers was slightly earlier i don't remember when producers was 67 oh okay yeah, but it was a movie I can no longer show in class because of because well, of reasons. certain words. <laughs> yeah, Blazing Saddles. Blazing Saddles, yes, and that's yeah. I think that's the one that most people talk about when they talk about Mel Brooks or Mel Blank, either or. Mel Blank, I really <laughs> love Mel Blank in Spaceballs, though. <laughs> he really uses a Schwartz well. He does. Um, but I think Blazing Saddles is the one that because people are like, well, he did it, you know. Uh, but there's, oh, they're using that as an excuse to say the word, like, yes. no, the, oh, yes, absolutely. He, but he's but making a, fun of it, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> the whole thing is to make fun of people who are racist, and it's it's yeah. wonderful. Um, and honestly, I think watching this while also thinking about how that was also in the same year you can see how um diverse mel brooks really is he's very funny but he's very diverse because this is completely the opposite direction of something like the opposite direction but they wanted to do like an homage to the old universal horror 
and it was great as it. Yeah. And they fought to get it black and white. You know, the studios trying to screw them over by doing it in color and then trying to do it black and white. Otherwise, you know, wink, wink. And they had had to fight for a lot of this. You had to do it black and white. Just like to be or not to be, you know, that was much better in black and white. And that's the thing. They got the set. They have some of it, actually, the original fucking set pieces by the original designer of Frankenstein. That's incredible. That's incredible. Right? And, this is a, a, and it shows, yeah. like, the whole thing shows. Like, the sets are incredible. The acting's incredible. It's so funny, even to this day. And um, this, I believe, is Terry Gar's first movie. Really? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, I, I want to say this is a uh, rumor has it allegedly, <laughs> allegedly, probably, allegedly, probably. Oh, besides, oh, wait, how does this? How the fuck does her IMDb go this way? Like I, uh, her IMDb kind of like skips a couple of years. It goes back this way. Oh, here we go. I'm gonna scroll all the way down because that's gonna be annoying as hell to edit out later on. Oh, so she did TVs and shorts and stuff like that, like Batman, yeah. girl outside the rink, like uncredited shit. Of course, Star Trek the original series. Like you gotta get your, half your, you know, you gotta get your foot in the door, but not. Yeah, a major. But this looks like her actual fucking first movie. Gosh, dang it, that's amazing. This is Gene's second or uh, first one he really wrote and did really well with. And he did so well, and you could ah. tell that he put so much effort into it. His monologues, his just everything is just perfect. And then again, like I said, I'm just hot off the trail of watching Frankenstein, and Frankenstein gets a bride, and she hates him. Uh, Frankenstein okay. gets his bride, <laughs> and he hate she hates him. Uh, spoiler alert: does not end well, um, like most Tinder dates. Um, no. <laughs> unless they go for 30 minutes with some lotion and then you get paid by the minute and i guess really weird because what were you saying uh, that was not where i was going i was going oh, to well, madeline uh, khan who fucking kills khan. it in this movie as she kills it in every movie as i'm yes. obsessed with her and um she was terrific the monster was terrific um Again, it's just, this is one of the classics um, that I grew up with. Um, in fact, yeah. my my dad even was talking about it the other day. And I'll give this shout out because he was always upset when his friends thought the line was dim your eyes when uh, hmm. Frankenstein like lifts the switch and there's, you know, sparks and stuff. And um, Igor says, Igor says, too late. It, but the real line is damn your eyes and my dad i guess for so long has carried this grudge i can say it, it is damn your eyes that was the on the subtitle it is uh it is true so that's the joke damn your eyes i thought it was damn your eyes people actually thought it was dim your eyes dim your eyes but it wouldn't work as a joke because igor says too late and points at his jack his eyes, eyes. are up. Yeah. yeah, well, Marty, he's known for. He's those already eyes. damned. He's already, right. di- yeah, you know, yeah, exactly. Damned and dimmed, and unlike Peter Boyle, who is the monster, and he, Peter, that would not, that monster would not work with anyone else. It had no. to be Peter Boyle. No, because he has such a kind of a softness to him, and especially when, he, well, I can't spoil it because you this know this movie's only older than most of our only listeners. Old. Than most of our listeners, don't but spoil this shit for them. He does have a softness to him, and he does have just this uh, genuineness that of the monster that is just very sweet, and you can actually see that too. And I think it was Karloff, his his monster as well, but yeah. you can definitely see it in this monster. He's just. Especially when Gene Wilder takes him into his arms, he's like, "You're just a poor baby," and, and it's great. Yeah, there are some movies where Gene Wilder almost didn't get in the film because Mel Brooks didn't think they were appropriate or in the right vein. And when Wilder is kind of, "We have to do this. We have to do this. We have to do this way," and so Mel Brooks, like, "Fine, we'll do one take. We'll see how it goes." And the most iconic scene was almost not in the movie. Really? At the end, yeah. The dance number. 
the dance number. Oh, the that dance number was almost perfect. didn't make it in. Yeah, it, it, ain't it? That's the thing. You can listen to every part of this thing. Oh my god, that's a perfect scene. That's a perfect scene. Apparently, allegedly, because I've been listening to Mel Brooks's thing and Joan Wilder's autobiography. Apparently, they both say the first cut after they made the movie, they go up to the editing room. It was absolute dog shit. What? <laughs> For wow. like the first couple months of editing. And oh, tell you no. get, you get it down, you get it down. They did a, a screening. No one fucking laughed at the screening. It was like, oh, they'll be, come back next month, but, you know. And they made it so fucking tight. So there has to be tons of shit cut out. There has to be, and there has to be. Unfortunately, it's not like it is nowadays. Where I mean, it's all digital, so you can just oh, save it's cut all out. That. Yeah, it's gone. Yeah, <laughs> it's it gone. is gone forever. It is lost yeah. to us. And yeah. That's sad because yeah, you have to wonder too of of what could have been and what was, you know, that we didn't get to see. But that the audience yeah, that, today would be like, oh, we're up for this shit. Yeah, that we're just genuinely curious. Like I remember yeah. watching uh the jitterbug, um Jesus little God. little scraps and pieces um that was from Wizard of Oz. Was it a good song? No. It was terrible. But it was very interesting to watch. <laughs> like it was really good to see and like to be like, wow, okay, that's interesting. That would have made so much more of a difference. No. And um yeah, go on. If you're doing the, the if you're doing that from Wizard of Oz, it made it much of a difference. Would you have put out that as a single? Do you want to record it right now? Put it as oh, a right single now? and it's like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, we not can right do now. This. Right now yeah, like, right we right could right do this right now. Like, let's do it yeah. live. Instead let's do of this it live. Episode, let's go. <laughs> instead of this episode, we're going to just go straight into that. We're just going to go straight into that and yes. not talk about anything else. Here no. we go. One, Movie two, speak for three, yourself. four. Oh wait, sorry. It's five, six, no, seven, eight. Sorry. Seven, eight. Five, six, okay, I can't five, count. Six, that's that's too hard. <laughs> One, uh, 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 two, two. But you know what? Nineteen seventy-four, rated PG, and we have well, two adults, arguably two adults. This is our my fucking top ten movie. Well, Where's PG, this? PG is. I mean, PG back then is not PG now. You know, it's after. What, what do you think this would be? Thirteen. Oh, PG thirteen, absolutely. Why? With this, the sex jokes, um, probably mostly the sex jokes. Yeah, there is a parental guy. Let me see what the parental guy said. Uh, sex nudity, mild. A woman asks a man if you enjoyed a role in the hate. Yeah, very, very few sex jokes. Some violence and gore. Some profanity, but it's all <clears throat> bitch, damn bastard, hell, Jesus Christ, goddamn shit. Yeah, that would be, be probably be PG thirteen. Yeah, I can I can, I can see a thirteen, but still not yeah. gonna be an R. It's nowhere near an oh, R. Oh gosh, no, 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 no! Like yeah, I would watch a wild, thirteen year old. Man. Yeah, I'd watch let a thirteen year old watch this. No problem. Hell's yeah. No problem. Hell's yeah. Um, but anyway, if if you are younger, if you have not seen this, <laughs> and we're just talking about it very lovingly, so the premise is basically, um. The grandson of Frankenstein um, is right. is now um, doing his own work. He neurosurgeon. Has, yep, neurosurgery. He is completely disassociated from his great uh, his grandfather. Doesn't want anything to do with him. But uh, somebody says comes and says, actually, you're part of his will. Will you come back to the Frankenstein castle so you can? Um, basically see what is in it for you right so he goes there um not kind of knowing what he's is in store for him he's given his uh, an assistant which is igor which used to also <laughs> help his grandfather and a very lovely assistant uh blonde girl uh blonde girl what's her name what who's the blonde's name yeah Terry Gar's name? No, no, yeah. But Inga? Inga, thank you. Yeah. So, and Inga. And um, and she's the one who wants to roll in the hay. And she has incredible knockers. <laughs> uh, she, she, she does. <laughs> she in does. In the movie. That's in the, the movie. line from the movie. We're not being weird. We're that, not that's being weird. Line, yes. There's a lot of, of silly jokes. So anyway, yeah. he gets in there, and um, there's also a, a woman who's been taking care of the castle called Frau Luca. 
Look, which and, means glue, I believe. <laughs> yes, which is why the horses Go are through. freaked out. That, okay, uh, Gene Wilder says nah, he had no idea that's what it meant. He got oh, really? it from some other. Yeah, he just oh, got it okay. from. I forgot the artist's name. It was like that's where he got it from. Well, it just happened it would, in me glue. Well, I think it'd make more sense because the whole adage of horses used to be. Anyway, used to be. Used I can't to be. wait to retire my horse to make him glue. Have him stick around a little bit longer. <laughs> Where's my? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I'm not by a soundboard. I have no idea. So yeah. I don't know. Yeah. ah, damn it! <laughs> I still found the fucking kazoo. Yeah. So, um, so anyway, he he he's still adamantly nope. I don't care. I don't care about this. But he and Inga find mm. a secret laboratory and in the secret mm. laboratory he finds the notes of his grandfather and finds the key to bringing back life from death and from there hijinks ensue as they hijinks create ensue. the monster because and i'm gonna tie this back into our last episode where we had my best friend's exorcism yeah the brain is from this abby person <laughs> abby normal abby normal that's right yep that's why the brain, you know, this, yeah, it it sets everything up and it takes itself seriously. It, it's not like the, the stupid, it's not a scary movie. Oh, no, you know, no. They're not it, doing like a scary movie spoof of it. They're actually doing a horror movie. Yeah, it it's, just happened to be. it's, there are lots of homages to the, yeah. the older uh, Frankensteins with the little girl, with the blind man, with the violin. <laughs> the blind man. Um. <laughs> which is Gene Hackman, which was incredible. Yes. Um, and, um, but it, it, it is good as a parody because it is not just stupid. There's thought behind it. There's thought behind each. No, action. it's from love and stuff like that. It, it goes a long way to be on its own thing. And yes. you're not going to like, oh, that's a riff off from Frankenstein. Like they might hit the, the beats of Frankenstein, but that's kind of what they were doing. Yeah. You know, but it, they make it a thousand percent their own and it, the love comes through. It, it really does. And gosh, I think this is our best movie that we reviewed together. <laughs> I think it might be. I think it might be. Yeah. Um, and it's very, it's a beloved classic. Like, you know, um, a lot of the jokes still hold because they're just classic jokes. Um. You know, it's a lot of body comedy. It's a lot of yeah. um, uh, just silliness, uh, dick jokes. It's silly. You know, it's it, very silly. D- dick jokes never, you know, truly go away. They keep giving. But they're they're pretty hard to do. <laughs> they are hard. People to think do. they're easy, but they're very hard to do. Yeah. Uh, allegedly. You allegedly. just gotta grab it, grab hold of that and dick just joke. Just fucking go for it for thirty five minutes. Make it come in your way. Anyway, yeah, it okay, ends on a dick idea. joke. It ends on a dick joke. It it kind of does. You're right. It does. It ends on it, a dick it joke. It does. Which is weird <laughs> because that's a, the, the, that dick joke is a callback to kind of the dick joke they use in Blazing Saddles. Yeah, that's true. It's true. It's true. Yeah. Yep. And uh, so two dick jokes in 1974 Shit. by Mel Brooks. Uh, and both movies were pretty, <laughs> pretty... Spaceballs does a dick joke as well. My God! Oh yeah, this, Schwartz. This, absolutely. Mel Brooks just does his entire career in dick jokes. Why am oh, I? Oh, absolutely. That? Why not? Yeah, and I'm gonna give you the tagline to this movie. Are you ready? Yes. This is all they needed to get people to sell out. Oh, let me let me it. let me try to let me try to guess it. Yes. Okay. Tagline. Okay. The try tagline. To guess. Yep. Um. Younger, fresher. Better. The freshener? No. Nope. <laughs> nope. I don't know. Nope. Come early, get a seat. Oh, that. What the actual fuck? That, that that's classic. That classic tagline. Buy a ticket. They just is like, oh, you should probably buy a ticket early. You should come. That's all. Yeah. And it's not even like come early <laughs> for your. Come. Dick jokes. <laughs> no. Charity, oh. no. Presents, please. Tracy Jordan. Yeah, it's... <laughs> when you know your PR team's like, oh, fucking just go see it. 
yeah, that, that's their that's entire rough. advice. <laughs> that's rough. That's rough. I'm glad it's a beloved film. <laughs> Absolutely. This this is the one that no matter who you are in horror, you've probably seen. Oh yeah. Young, old, because we pass this to our kids, our kids pass it to our grandkids, grandkids pass it on to their kids. I think And then they that's pass how... it on to my best friend's exorcism. <laughs> yes. And then we just pass on that one. And then we Next pass time we just on take that. a pass on it. Yeah. yeah. I, I love it. There's there's not a crappy there's no downtime on this movie. It, it's all t- it's tight. And that's what they're saying. They edit the crap out of this. They have a tight movie. The music is great. The score, everything is solid on this. The set designs, the costume design, the acting is phenomenal. And uh, I have a connection to this movie. Ooh. Oh. And if you can guess this connection to the movie, I will buy you the movie. Kevin Bacon? No. Is it something I like what you're, you're, I like what you're thinking. I like what you're thinking. Of. <laughs> but no. You met Gene it, it, Wilder, and he was playing guitar at a party, and you're just like, hey, he's a cool dude. <laughs> no. Although I did try to buy his house. It didn't go too well. <laughs> but that's not a good action. Okay. No. No, 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 no. So what would you give this movie? I'm going to say a 4.5. 4.5. Why not a 5? I'm going to say why not a five because I didn't like the antagonist. I felt like he should have been a stronger antagonist. Mm. Okay. I can see that. And you know what? You know movie. You know the score I had to movie this. You know what score I, know, I had to I put know. on the movie? What yeah. is it? Five. Fuck. Yeah, it's a five. This is a five for me. It's a five because you can watch this movie with your kids. You can watch it with your parents and no one's going to be like, hiding in shame oh yeah that's they're not true. gonna do anything it's just gonna be a matter of wondering what my cat's trying to eat right now so if i go <laughs> off camera for a second you stole something from the office it's probably a paper clip i ain't gonna uh, no it's not a paper clip it's just insane that's all oh good like my, my cat's getting so old he's like 96 <laughs> i know right but he's getting old to the point where the poop he still like poops which is good, but then he runs before he's out of the box, and poop just like flies ever from his butthole. But he's like, you don't get upset on him because it's basically like a ninety-six-year-old man running from the <laughs> toilet, going, "We am done, we," and you can just like shit see shit dropping from the guy's butthole. Like you can't get mad at great grandpa for that. It's like, fuck it, he lived in ninety-six. Good he, job, dude. He lived a great life, and he's yeah. still living it. I'll He's pick that dead. shit up, literally, I guess. Literally. Yeah, I, I think you just came by to sometimes high some poop on me. All right. So yeah, I'll give us a five. It do, yeah. it doesn't it doesn't age poorly. It ages great. No, it is it does. I am amazed by Gene Wilder's connection to the force because he was putting out some fucking movies he wrote and produced mm-hmm. and starred in in a row. They're just amazing chop draw, just fucking hell. And I am having his audible book for the autobiography. So he's narrating. I don't know if he's lying in this book. <laughs> if he's not lying, he's got the most because Jesus is a really funny fucking guy. Yeah. And he can do he does things just deadpan. So you're like, is he being serious? Are you just fucking is he fucking with people at this point? Oh, absolutely. It's kind of like the Norm McDonald books. Like Norm are pretty sure is lying, but I can't get a feel. It's almost like Norm MacDonald saw or read Gene Wilder's book and that I can do this for his own. But if, if Gene Wilder was telling the truth, he got raped as a kid. Oh, God. And we all know by that. By other rape kids. Is, rape is not our sponsor. Rape is not our sponsor. But, so there's like a big fucking darkness in this shit. Oh, God. Like he got raped as a kid, had a lot of trauma from it from but not by parents not by his uncle by other kids so, for basically being jewish we uh, should probably and, uh, put a content warning on this episode yes why is kanye liking my fucking episode what the shit no raper is not our sponsor and it's not we're, we're pointing out that you should not rape little kids kanye oh i'm God. not saying kanye is raping little kids it was Allegedly. more for the Jewish thing. Yeah. Alleg- I don't I don't fucking know. I don't um, know what he's up to. But I do know that he has horrific. some fucking dark, like, absolute fucking darkness. And his mom was abusive. Uh, emotionally abusive. 
And, and so you, you get this fucking combination and of just pure tortured genius. Like that's kind of like the, the motif for Gene Wilder. You know, his, his last, his last, his last wife, one of his wives dies of ovarian cancer, Gilda Radner, of course. Yeah. And it describe he describes relationships. I'm like, Oh my God, I, I, I understand this. Mm. It, that tells you anything. He didn't wash his dick in fucking hand sanitizer. though. <laughs> He drew the line yeah, somewhere. Yeah, you you did that. We know. finish the book. You didn't. Finish uh, you're the book, right. right. I still got like a chapter. I still have a chapter left. You still have a chapter and left. And then I washed my penis in hand sanitizer. The end. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. Yeah. So you just like, yeah. It ends the with end. a dick joke. It ends with a dick joke, as it should. I, I would. I would enjoy that. I would enjoy that. But he was Hollywood. He's an actor through and through. An actor and he has acting tips. So I know this is about Young Frankenstein, but if you want to check out his book, Kiss Like a Stranger or Kiss Me Like a Stranger, I don't know, Google it. It's a wonderful book. Mel, Mel Gibson. <laughs> 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 Mel Gibson probably has a wonderful book too. Uh, but I would say on, not, probably because of his oh, anti he still on a, He's anti so, Semitic. Is anti-Semiticism? <laughs> is anti-Semiticism? Um... <laughs> Today is sponsored by all the Mel's oh, in our life. God, Today is sponsored Mel by all the Mel's. Brooks Thanks, Mel's. has a great Audible book on yes. Young Frankenstein. That's yes. very much worth the buy-in as well. And honestly, all, all of him, all of his books, because I've I've read. Did I you read the, his biography? Yes. Brooks's biography. Yes, um, a while good? ago, but yes. And it was good. And honestly, anything he does right is just so entertaining. And it, it, yeah, he has that voice. Yeah. He has that voice. He, everything he says is just he's he's a, a storyteller, and also he's very just human. You know, he puts it out there, yeah. and he's very humble. And it's incredible to read his life story of um, being a young, you know, Jewish boy, and and growing up basically through a lot of you know world war ii and and, yeah. and just everything after that as well and it's it's very fascinating and i absolutely say yeah go out and read these books people read more learn get educate yourself educate yourself and that's as fascinating to say about the world war ii because there's part of gene wilder's book when he's getting bullied and sexually assaulted by little kids it's like he didn't understand why mm. and they always say because you're jewish but he didn't understand why that was the issue right it's like he's like he wasn't quite questioning getting bullied and and as he was saying being cornholed but he was kind of like because I'm Jewish? How does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Like there's, there's other reasons he would be like, oh, okay, it makes perfect sense to be this. But he just couldn't understand the, the, the anger and the hate that they had just because of his heritage. Which still goes on to this day, obviously. Right? Unfortunately, I'm a Laker fan and Kylie, Kylie Irvin, fuck me, man. Kylie Irvin. Kylie Cyrus? What? Kylie Cyrus? Miley I, I Cyrus, Kylie. Different, yeah. No, there, there's Kylie basketball Jenner? players, like, but there's there's talent out there. I'm like, oh my God, this guy's ultimately talented. And then they'll say some stupid fucking anti Semitic shit. Like, dude, I, I just can't. I don't want that talent on my team anymore. Yeah. yeah. It, it's hard to watch different movies. And I like, I always listen to Kanye, but his earlier stuff is pretty fucking good. Oh, yeah. It's absolutely. hard to listen to that shit right now. It is, and especially when you hear real life events of like um, the Holocaust museums getting targeted, and Jewish yeah, people, bizarre. Jewish synagogues getting targeted. I, you know, it's, I do like the uh, the other the non Jewish synagogues. The non Jewish ones, yeah. <laughs> Me too. The Jewish synagogues getting targeted. Well, As we I was take, gonna wow, say Jewish. I was gonna say Jewish church. Binary and people I, are people, and too. then I realized what the name was. Okay, yeah. <laughs> it's okay. The, the Jewish but church, you know. <laughs> yeah, as as we like, man, this got fucking deep and dark in a second. But <laughs> I our think point we do is, need a content a content warning. Fuck yeah! <laughs> our, our point is, go watch Young Frankenstein. 
Go watch it. It's a fantastic movie. Go watch any random Gene Wilder or Mel Brooks movie. It'd be entertaining. Oh my gosh. It's so it's so good. Um although the, the gay jokes do age poorly. Just gonna say that. There's gay uh, jokes in Young Frankenstein? Uh, nope. But in okay, uh, I'm sorry, Blazing oh, Saddles. Blazing Saddles. Mongo Straight? Blazing Saddles, there's a, a few gay jokes in the end. Though. No, but is that the is that the is it the gay joke? Mongo straight, is that the punchline for it? No, no. It's it's when they're going into uh the one that I recall yeah. myself is when they're going into the different movies and they go into like the, the Broadway. Oh, the like, can can one. Da, da, yep. da, 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 da. I didn't and, take that as as a gay joke. You took it yeah, as a gay joke? Yeah, because they were very flamboyant and feminine. Oh, I thought that was just like a, like a, a Broadway thing. Like I didn't think it was like gay. I thought it was just like they're they're going against like the more, like all the all the Broadway's like rent not rent but like the the huge dance numbers in every freaking scene, right? Plus, no, it was a gay joke. Plus the Why producers. I have to watch it again. Well, the the, pro- pro- the movie the producers. Yeah. Uh, the original title was like something about Hitler. I no, not like something about Marius. Like it was something with Hitler to do. I, well, you know yeah, what? but it was that I, was the I joke. I haven't seen the producers in oh, okay. thirty years. They, they did change it in the newer producers. Um, so it's it's like he they under- remade the producers with Matthew Broderick and Nathan. F- no, not Nathan Fillion. Uh, no, it's like Nathan Fillion's in it. Not the Nathan new one? Fillion. No, it's not Nathan Fillion. Uh, the guy that played uh Timon. <laughs> I don't know. So Broderick is Leo Bloom? Um, I believe so, yeah. We are losing everyone right now. All right, I'm back sorry. to horror. That's okay. It's it's all good. Now I'm gonna it's say we too. I gave it a, give it a four point five, I give it a five. Go check out Young Frankenstein. It is absolutely worth it. Aha, uh-huh. see? It's absolutely worth it. And it's I wanna think quotable. next week. You know what I want to do next time we do a, a movie together? What? Haunted Honeymoon. Haunted Honeymoon. Haunted. Oh God, that one was. Gene rough. Wilder. That, that one was rough for you. Rough. Oh, that okay. One was now, rough. maybe I don't want to do it. So I want to remember. I'll oh, do oh, it. oh, it is. I'll do it. But yeah, oh. it had Gilda, Gilda, Gilda Radner, mm. and and that was a bit rough. Not as rough, rough, rough as, as not as rough as Transylvania Six Five Hundred though. Oh, I got this confused. Damn and it. And Ed Begley Jr. And uh. The other guy from oh, Independence um, Day. Uh, well, Jurassic Park, excuse you. <laughs> Whatever, I don't know. <laughs> anyway. Getting back um, to it. Okay. Do you so, have anything to plug? Yeah, it's your plug first. Oh, Go for it. That's plug. right. Shit. Okay. Shit. I'm going to plug something really exciting that I had just found out about. And Is it a pen from your room? It's a pen I, from I miss my room. Plug. The pens from the room. It's my pen from my room. It's so exciting, guys. It, oh, plug this thing in stops. my wall. Um, okay. So no, it wasn't real. I am hoping that I can go there. Yeah, it is yeah. It is coming this Ooh. 2023 oh, for June second, third, and that's it. <laughs> the second wow. and the third. Um in uh Ohio, but Small Town Monsters is presenting Monster Fest. Wow. Small Town yes. Monsters. That's awesome. That's your jam. Yes. And they will have a movie premiere. They're going to have vendors and speakers. That's uh, very you cool. You can go. You can get tail, uh, ticket sales now. You can sponsor them. You can volunteer. It's going to be so exciting. So I that I'm is my plug. I'm so excited. Go check it out. Uh, you can go to smalltownmonsters.com and you can see it there. Um, get your information there. And like I said, it's going to come June second and third this 2023. 2023. That is awesome. I hope you get there, and maybe we can kind of get you there. Who knows? Now I'm going to plug. And that's amazing, by the way. Yeah. I'm going to plug Bodies, the oh, anthology yeah. that we're putting out. Some people are asking when it's coming out. Some people are pissed that pff, I didn't include their story. Yeah, Sorry. I'm pissed. Fuck Sucked you. a little less. Uh, yeah, whatever. So 
is coming out hopefully by the end of November, if not towards the first week of December. I, I'm still editing some stuff. Is that the actually? No, I'm not editing it. Is that the editors right now? However long they take to take Honestly, the cover is being great. a bit, you know. I think that's great because that is perfect for guess what, guys? Christmas time or holiday time, whatever you celebrate. That would be a perfect holiday gift for a loved it one. It is a perfect holiday gift. And every time you put something on holiday gifts, it goes somewhere else. And that somewhere else goes to women's charities because, god dang it, this year is pretty damn rough. Every year is rough, but this <laughs> year especially has been fucking shit. Sucked. <laughs> and we see this every year too. Like, oh, last year was a fucking breeze. Just all you did is last year, all your rights to your own bodies. Fuck. At least you still could think. <laughs> Next year is like, damn, we, we, we can't even think anymore. <laughs> can't even think. Can't even Some do anything. Bit. Yeah. Yeah, so go check that one out when it comes out. I'll, I'll put a link here. And I want to give a special shout out to Royals. Royals. Whew. Roy is a gay, duh. Also known as Cult Cinema Catacombs. These films exist. He's, you know, I think he put this out there in the public, but he's a friend of the show, and we just want to wish him a speedy recovery. All right. Love on you. And from the bottom of my heart, and to all the hearts, we're going to say by Jim Phoenix, on behalf of my co host, J.M. Brownack, we'd like to bid you good day. Bye bye. Oh, I, I, bye. I think I'm hearing music. You did. Yeah, you, you are. Did, you, did. I did you know what? I think, you, I think you did this music. I did do this music. I was so impressed by this music. I'm like, there's no fucking. Like, like, oh, that was really rude of me by saying, like, there's no way it's boxed this music. It's, 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 but it's, it's good. I know you did. It's too no, good. No, but I know you do good music. <laughs> I just forgot you did this one because I thought you did them for your old podcast. I do them for many. And I forgot it was for this. Uh, don't. But you know what I hear? What? I think I hear a cat. Oh. Hold on. I hear a cat. Yeah.